Whoa. Big news. That's right. What's up? All right. What is going on, everybody? How? Oh, y'all doing all right before we get started y'all already know the vibes give the video a big thumbs up bro we have huge news and it's very telling to how the video game market as a whole is doing the NPD numbers are officially coming out and this is coming from VideoGamesChronicles.com. The PS5, the PlayStation 5, is now the fastest selling video game hardware platform in US, US history. This is coming from the NPD, the firm NPD group and this is based on dollar sales generated by Sony's consoles after four months of availability. It's been four months already and Sony is killing it. Now, I already shared with you guys the numbers of how uh, the Switch is doing. And we know that the Switch is also breaking all kinds of records. It continues, it just passed the DS in lifetime sales. And so I think the Switch is going to be Nintendo's best-selling console ever. Now, it's debatable because it's a handheld. It's a both a handheld and home console, what category you put it in. But I was surprised to see this um, concerning Sony. And you have to take into account the PS5 is selling for 400 and really 500 because the $500 version is the most popular version and I have to say, it's a fantastic console. It's been dry 2021 off to a great launch, but we're not gonna get our next big game. I'm gonna talk about it at the end of the video, but dope, dope, dope console. Still plenty of games to play because both Sony and Xbox continue to get third party support, but Sony is crushing it. I believe now, don't quote me on this, but I believe the last numbers I saw it's almost doubled the sales of the Xbox Series S and X. And so um, the PS5 doing a fantastic job selling and pushing, pushing units. We just have to be patient in 2021 for the games that they're gonna announce. Um, I'm gonna talk about the games at the end of this video, but the news right now to start off is Sony is now the fastest selling hardware platform in US. This is just the US, not combining Japan and um, Europe. In US history, uh, Sony has the crowd. And I say this all the time, Sony's hardware always sells. PS1 over 100 million, PS2 over 100 million, PS3 was our, PS3 was their worst selling console at 85 million. I think 86 million, something like that. And PS4 over 100 million. PS5 more than likely will be over 100 million, even without Japan support. I think the PS5 is still gonna crush it. I don't live in Japan. I'm not voice chatting with anybody in Japan, so it is what it is. Bro, speaking of games coming to the PS5, we got some GTA 6 news, and this news may worry some. During the Morgan Stanley Tech Media and Telecom Conference this month, Take-Two, the parent company of GTA, Take-Two Interactive CEO Straw Zelnick revealed that Take-Two is of the mind that consumers are ready for a price increase in games. Based on what he's saying, GTA 6 could be another $70 game. 
and I quote, this is coming from the CEO of Take Two. We announced a $70 price point for NBA 2K21. And our view was that we're offering an array of extraordinary experiences, lots of replayability, and the last time there was a frontline price increase in the US was 2005, 2006. So we think consumers were ready for it. And that's what he ends his quote with. So he's pretty much saying the value is there. If it's going to be a game that you're gonna be playing repeatedly, um, the $70 price point is worth it. And here's the reality of the situation. Dudes are going to play $70 for GTA 6. If you're talking about, and I know dudes are, uh, I know dudes um, in the chat are probably like, oh, Obi-Wan, you're so anti-consumer. Bro, what are you talking about? Bro, consider what they gave us in GTA 5. The single player alone was a $60 game. Huge open world. But bro, then they added in the online multiplayer. The online multiplayer was like a game of its own. And to this day, online multiplayer is still, is still um, being played um, on, on, on servers. GTA 5 is still selling crazy units. They've still just added like a huge heist update. And so they're gonna deliver content after content to where gamers are like, hey, the $70 for a game that we're gonna play for the next eight years, because that's how long dudes have been playing GTA. GTA 5 has gone, has gone through three generations. Xbox 360 and the PS3, PS4, Xbox One, and now also on the PS5. It, that's crazy, bro. And so 70 bucks, you know why they're gonna charge it. So the CEO has all but confirmed $70 for a GTA 6. All right, next news item. Bro, it looks like the next, next month's PlayStation Plus game, not next month's, but soon upcoming PlayStation Plus game, a big one could have just been leaked all right <laughs> in a new crypt this comes from comicbook.com in a new cryptic tweet from nick baker on twitter activision and so from software's 2009 tw 2019 release of Sekiro shadows die twice sounds like it could be made available free uh, for some users this is what was tweeted out on twitter if you're thinking about buying Sekiro in the next couple of months or so maybe hold off just in case so it looks like it's going to be free on somebody's service probably playstation plus it could be a free game so um this dude is saying do not buy the game yet because it might be free i heard this game was dope i did beat um what was the playstation samurai game that just came out bro <laughs> you think i would know because <laughs> i beat the game um but um this is the hard um th they say that this one is tough as nails even though i just beat demon souls that remake on the ps5 bro so bring it on Sekiro. all right bro next news item phil spencer may have clarified the bethesda exclusivity situation this is what he says and i quote in the most recent round table so obviously I can't sit here and say every Bethesda game is exclusive because we know that's not true. There are contractual obligations that we're going to see through that we may always do and that through as we always do in every one of these instances. We have games that exist on other platforms and we're going to support those games on the platforms they are on. There are communities of players. We love those players and we're going to invest in them. And even in the future, there might be things that that have either contractual things or legacy on different platforms that will go do this is what that statement says to me that word where he says have a legacy on different platforms games like skyrim that saga fallout huge AAA games that historically have been on playstation um other brands I think they're going to continue to support them based. This is coming from his words. He did not say 
there's gonna be no more exclusive games coming to, uh, no more Bethesda game coming to PlayStation. He didn't say that. He says either contractual or legacy on different platforms. And so there's a history of games like Skyrim. And so I think there are big, big, big AAA games will probably also be on PlayStation platform. And everyone wins at the end of the day uh, for that. Because here's the, the difference with, let's say God of War or Halo being exclusive. God of War has always been a PlayStation exclusive. So I'm cool with that. I'm not gonna trip. Halo has always been a Xbox exclusive. I'm cool. I'm not gonna trip. Uh, you shouldn't have exclusive the anti-consumer. You're, su you're supposed to do that. But I think it's lame if you buy a huge third-party studio and then you just pull games that gamers are already playing away from them. That's like, hey, Sony. Sony's gonna buy EA. Y'all can no longer play Madden on your Xbox. That would be lame, bro. That would be lame of Sony to buy a studio to, to, to keep games away from gamers. And Phil Spencer doesn't look like they're going to do that. So that's that with that. And his recent comment made it seem like that's not going to happen. All right. At the beginning of the video, I was going to tell you all about, to just talk about um, upcoming games coming to the PS5. And... The next big game is going to be Returnal. And that is at the end of April. April, April. We already we also have the, the show, but that's a now multi-platform game. Returnal. I just tweeted this out on Twitter. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. This reminds me of a Metroid third. This reminds me of a Metroid game from a third person perspective. Um, I probably will be picking this up at the end of April. But that's it until then. Hey, go back, get some platinums. Um, play some third party games. That's what you got to do on your five until then. All right, dudes, what do you guys think about everything we talked about in this video? Sound off in the comment section below. I want to know. But before you go, bro, click that subscribe button. Stay up to date. All things gaming, bro. We out. Peace.